Hello and welcome to my podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and the beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. And with this yarn chat, we've got a couple of projects, new finished objects, and some really pretty yarn to show you. Today, my featured make is my Cats in the Coffee Cowl. Uh, you would think since I named it that it would be easier for me to say it quickly, but um, I named it after the, the mini skeins that I used in the set. This is Wonderland Yarn. I used one skein of their um, worsted, which is called March Hair, I think, that base, and then Cats in the Coffee minis that are also worsted. I like this pattern because it's a really big oversized cowl and it uses worsted weight minis, which you don't see a whole lot, um, but it would look really, really cool with scraps. In fact, I did a version of this that was a DK weight cowl for um, the craft fair that I was doing last year and that was also really pretty. So if you do it in a DK weight, it comes out more of a traditional cowl size, but I like the big oversized um, cowl and I love these colors. They look, they look really good together. Um, <laughs> I realized today as I was choosing what to wear for this podcast that I haven't worn many garments yet. And I think that's just because I'm terrified that if I wear them that like maybe spit up or something else will get on them. Um, but maybe next week I'll throw on a garment because it's been a little while. But yes, Cats in the Coffee Cowl. Love it. It's so pretty. You can find it on my Ravelry page and on my website, yarncraftpinnacle.com. So let's start with projects. So I really only have two. I don't have any finished objects this week. Um, I did block the Brixel cowl that I did, that I showed the last time I was on here. I took some really cute finished object pictures in the backyard last week and really like the way it came out. It's a small cowl, but it's very pretty, very decorative. Um, great for the holidays. I love it. And I love the yarn I used for it. So I've got two projects I'm working on. And I think I've said before, but because we have so many friends that are having babies this year, I think for the most part, I will have um, two projects always going. One will probably be a baby blanket and then one will be garment or just something else that I wanted to make. Maybe a design I'm working on. Um, so I've gotten some work done on it. This is no pattern for this. Um, I'm making this one up as I go, but I think I might do a pattern in the future that's similar because I like the way that this kind of looks like varsity stripes, a little bit sporty. Um, but I do not have a pattern written yet. The rest of the blanket is going to be this red color. Um, the person that I'm making this for is a big Chiefs fan. So that is why I chose Chiefs colors for their baby blanket. And I really like the way that it's working out. The rest of it's going to be really easy. And then I'll do some sort of a border, probably something really simple along the edges once I'm done. But I'm thinking once I finish this one that I will write a pattern for one that has the striping section at the top and the bottom. This one will just have it along the bottom. Um, and then maybe some sort of a ribbing border. I haven't quite decided, but I think that's what I'll do for another baby blanket this year is to do kind of a collegiate varsity themed um, baby blanket. So really liking the way this is working up. This is Pound of Love from Lion Brand. This is Big Twist Yarns. I think it's just called White. This one I think is called Cherry. And then this is Yarn B Soft and Sleek, I think. Um, but it's all in my Ravelry page. Trying to do better about that. Um, yeah, I like the way it's working out a lot. This is a good, simple, mindless crochet. Great for watching TV. And great for crocheting when you have a baby on your chest or in your lap. The other project that I'm working on, I had not started the last time that we talked. And I feel really good about the progress that I've gotten on it. Um, this is my first pattern test of the year. I am doing the Canyon Crew Neck by Stacy from Bah Humble. And I really like it. So let me show you. Let me make sure I'm not losing the hook. I think it's already in the bottom of the bag. 
so like, yeah this is the front so I finished both panels so this is the front this is the back I think um, there's a little bit more color pulling on the front so I think I'm right I think this is the front um, and it's really really pretty the yarn that I'm using is winter glow by Hobie I'm really liking a lot um, it comes in these giant cakes I bought two of these for the whole sweater and it's working out great it is a acrylic and wool blend and they had lots of colors of it I think that they're all number colors um, instead of like names so I don't remember what this one is like I don't remember the number that this one is but there were two black ones and this one had more jewel tones in it and I really like it the color pulling that you see right here is much much less noticeable in person I think it's because I had the ring light on that it's like really standing out but I don't mind it it looks good it looks good on um I decided to do the neck ribbing before doing the sleeves but it will be a long sleeve crew neck um the reason why I did this is because I was doing a pattern test I think last year where they suggested that you do the collar or the ribbing along the inside of a cardigan or anything like that before you do the sleeves because usually that will pull it up and that way you are getting the right sleeve length instead of a little bit too long or too short so that is why I did it that way and it was just a nice break to do something really small instead of um, a whole sleeve if I'm being honest but I really like it I felt like I was not making enough progress on this because I'm really like I'm generally a pretty fast pattern tester and um, it was just going a lot slower because everything is just gonna go a lot slower now um, and that's okay like I'm still making really good progress um, I think now that both of the body panels are finished it feels like I've made really good headway it's also a slightly thick and thin yarn and that just goes a little bit slower um, but yeah I'm really happy with it it's incredibly lightweight the gauge is um, is a pretty um, lightweight gauge so I'm very excited about it a lot of the pattern testers are doing theirs very quickly and lots of colors um, some of them are solid some of them are a little variegated like this um i don't think anybody's doing stripes but stripes would be super cute you do it um vertically like you're going like you do your your panel sideways back and forth so vertical stripes would honestly be super cute or even just like contrast ribbing there's there's a lot of possibilities with this um crew neck so i really like it um I'm hoping that this weekend I can get maybe halfway through a sleeve. Um, the body panels felt like they took a long time. So I'm hoping that the sleeves feel a lot shorter since they're on a smaller circumference, but who knows. Um, but I'm really happy with it and I really like it. The other thing I think that made me feel like I was doing this very slowly is that I thought it was due, like the pattern test was due in February and it's not due until the beginning of March so that was the other part <laughs> that I felt like I was behind um, but yeah I really like it I like it a lot I like the yarn um, if you haven't used a thick and thin yarn before it might be a little bit tricky I would not use a wood hook with this yarn um, I used a wood hook for a pattern test that I did last year that was a little bit thick and thin and I think it was a whole I think it was all acrylic it didn't have any wool in it and yet like the grippiness of it like continually to catch on the hook made it an unpleasant experience and I just should have changed the hook much earlier than I did but I like it a lot Canyon crew neck it looks great and I feel good about it I feel good about the progress that I have it's also a little odd to me to be talking to you on this podcast and not having more whips to show you because generally I have several things going on at once but that's just not the season of life that I'm in right now <laughs> and honestly last week I did not film because we had a lot of errands and a lot of appointments everything's fine um just normal new parent stuff but um by, by the time that 
the weekend came along. I kept pushing, filming one more day, one more day. And then at, by the time that Monday came around, I was like, it's just not going to happen. And that's okay. It's just not going to happen some weeks. Um, but I'm really glad to be here with you today. So those are the two projects that I'm working on. I don't have a Ravelry page for the Canyon Crew Neck yet because um, I'm going to wait until it is not being tested anymore before I start posting anything in Ravelry with that. But I really like it. And hopefully by next week, maybe I'll have a whole sleeve. Who knows? The, oh, excuse me. The other reason I wanted to hop on here is that I have some pretty yarn to show you. So let's start... Let's start with the blue skein. So uh, another thing that happened last week is that my sister and her fiance came to visit. Um, they were on their way to their next travel nursing gig. And so they stopped and said, hey, with us and visited with me, my husband and uh, Melly and Scoot, of course. And it was really great. They were only here for a night, but it was really good to see them. But they um, had just come from Seattle and uh, my sister's fiance is also a crocheter. And so she brought me this beautiful skein from Seattle before they left. It is from Stranded Studio and it is a worsted weight. It's called Parisian Night and it's 100% superwash merino. I mean, oh, so pretty. I love this, I love blue and I don't work with blues enough. So I have this beautiful skein of worsted weight yarn. Don't know what I want to do with it yet, but I went to my stash and I thought it would pair really well with this skein. So this is Knitted Wit. This is one of their Her Story colors. It's also 100% Superwash Merino um, and it has 200 yards. Yeah, so they're, they're both worsted and they're about the same because um, sometimes worsteds, as with any yarn, can be a little bit thicker or thinner. Um, and this one is their uh, color called Passing the Test, which was um, influenced by the Bechdel test. And I think that they would go really well together. And it would be even more fun because I bought this skein when I was visiting um, them in Seattle when we were there last summer. So maybe, I feel like I always say, it'll be a cowl, but how pretty would that cowl be? It would be good. Um, maybe a hat. I really don't wear hats that often. Um, but maybe a cowl. We'll see. Do you have any pattern suggestions for a variegated and a tonal worsted weight? Let me know below. The other pretty yarn that I got. Well, I got two more pretty yarns. This one is the, um, you're going to hear some crinkling, so I'm sorry. The Amanda Knits mini skeins. They came with these really pretty knitting stitch markers. I think they're called like snag free stitch markers. Um, as a crochet, I can't really use these, but I'll set them aside, maybe put them in a giveaway or something later. Um, but the yarns are very pretty as always. So the micro mini is called Sorrow. And it's like this really moody black purple it's super pretty and then the regular mini is called unloved um didn't realize that was the name of it before i opened this so those are the two colors together very pretty very dark and moody i still had of not decided if i want to continue the blanket that i started i don't even know if i want to call it a blanket like I don't know. I'm afraid that it's going to be too thin and too delicate. It's a very pretty granny square motif. I'm happy I designed it, but I'm not sure if I want to keep making them in a fingering weight. I like it would be maybe a, I don't see, I don't know that I would want to do a cardigan that was this many different colors, but it, they would be really pretty in a cardigan. Um, or even like a little pouch where you have one on each side. There's a lot of uses for them as a granny square, but I just don't know that I want to make a blanket with these anymore. So I haven't decided what I want to do with my minis um, from that club. Or if I just want to use them as one-offs. Like it doesn't have to all be 
cohesive because they're not, it's not like, um, the club itself doesn't have a theme. Like the theme is that they are mini skeins. So there isn't a cohesive element. So maybe I will just start using them as one-offs uh, because they are very, very pretty. They are very, very pretty. So yeah, that was that one. And then the last really pretty yarn I want to show you is from a club that I do want to make a granny square blanket with. Um, and that is the Steep Club from Terrapin Fiber Works. Um, she makes gorgeous hand-dyed cotton. And this club is all, it's all a yarn and tea club, as evidenced by the label. And it's so pretty. And what I really like about her club is that you get to see the color before it gets to you. So if you want to order more, you can before she ships it. And um, you can skip them up, cancel at any time. But just her inspirations are always so unique. And like this one is inspired by a classic blue and white teacup. And she nailed it. Like, it's just so good. I got mine on a uh, DK base, the Chesapeake DK, which is an organic cotton. And I do kind of want to make a blanket out of this. I thought about doing like maybe tea towels every month, which would be super cute, but I think it would only make sense if I had like, I don't know, a yarn store somewhere to display all of those things. Um, because I just don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I have the space in my kitchen for 12 tea towels for the year, but 12 squares and a blanket, that could be fun. And then at the end of the year, I could just get some extra yarn from her and do a border. Like it would be great. So that's why I think this is going to become, and then it would also be just something dedicated to do with the yarn every month. So when I got it in, I could wind it, I could have it with the tea, make my square and then put it aside or seam it with the next one. And I think that would be really fun. She has already posted pictures of the February color and it is so pretty. I think it's, hmm, it's inspired by like roses, roses and green tea, I think. And that's kind of the flavor of the tea but it's this really pretty pale pink um, with green and it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's really nice. So I'm excited about that because that'll ship soon, but I think that I'm gonna do some sort of a granny square motif. And I did, I did get on Pinterest and look and see if there were any that were like teacup inspired or tea inspired. And there are some, but there really aren't any that are like that have that motif that are one color. And so I think I'm just gonna do something pretty and maybe a little bit floral with these. I think that will be a lot of fun. And maybe I'll do the square and then I'll have some left over to do something else with. But I really, really like it. I love Terrapin Fiber Works. And she was also um, going through her inventory and she had a few of her um, skeins from Rhinebeck last year, her special colorway that she did. Um, I think she was at Woolen Folk. Um, but she had a special colorway for it that weekend called Antique Autumn. And I always really liked it, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But when she said she had a couple left, I was like, fine, I'll just grab a skein. And I got this one also on Chesapeake DK. And the reason why I got the DK one is because I had already had these two. Whew, they are getting blown out. Let's see if I can hold them all up. Um, that are also on her Chesapeake DK. I think this one is called Swallow Falls. They're the same yarn, but as with a lot of hand dyed yarn, like you're going to get some variation from skein to skein. And so this one actually has a, a few more speckles in it, but I bought three skeins a couple years ago when I did the Coliseum cowl, cause I wasn't sure how big I wanted the cowl to be. And I think they were in a bundle. Um, so I've had these in my stash for a while and I thought that they would go really well with this antique autumn. So that'll be something. Um, it's all very soft, very lightweight. I don't know if it wants to be a wrap of some kind or it's not really enough to do a top. It could be a shawl. Um, 
but we'll see. We'll see what it wants to become. Whatever it wants to become, because it is a cotton and I, because it would be a more of a lightweight item, I think I would do a, a more of an open stitch. But I don't know. It might be nice to have a cotton option in the fall, especially as we visit people in warmer weather. So that was the last stain that I got. And I love it. I really, really love it. I think um, that Lila, uh, the dyer behind Terrapin Fiber Works, I think she made herself a sweater out of this yarn and it was gorgeous so very happy I got that and I think that's all I got this week um we have been busy with life going to and from appointments figuring out what our new normal is because with a baby it changes every week um we are excited for things that are coming in March we will be traveling for most of March. Um, that'll be the last few weeks before um, Vaughn's paternity leave will be up. So we're planning on doing a mega road trip. So I probably won't be podcasting much in March, but we'll see. Um, we'll be visiting with family. So it is possible that I would just be filming in a different location. Haven't quite decided that yet. I've got a couple of pattern ideas and I have not forgotten about the <laughs> quilt motifs that I am still planning on doing pretty early this year. I'm hoping maybe next week or the week after I can carve out some time to do some filming and some crocheting with those. But with that, um, I will wind down with what I can't let go of this week. And what I can't let go of this week is, uh, baby related, as is most of the things in my life, is um, how many different types of swaddles there are. Not sure if y'all have seen, but there is every type of swaddle that you can imagine. And with MJ, we haven't really decided if she likes being swaddled or not, or if it's helping her sleep. Um, but we did get some new ones that make her look like a little starfish because they hold her arms up like this, which I think is more comfortable for her because she did not like having her arms by her side. Um, but it does look a little bit silly, especially as she's like moving around. And because her arms are up here and it's a little bit um, freer. She can like knock her passy out of her mouth. And so we'll see, <laughs> we'll see if, if they're effective. I'm looking forward to when she can roll over on her own so she can sleep on her stomach since that is most comfortable for her. Um, that's generally how she takes naps on me or Vaughn right now anyway, is sleeping on our chest. So looking forward to when that happens and then we can put all of these crazy swaddles away. <laughs> and with that, I will see you next week. Um, happy making. Bye.